Namaskar. Hi everyone, welcome to Cultural Integration Fellowship. And I want to acknowledge that I acknowledge the divinity in all of you, each of you, and do my best to acknowledge the divinity in myself as well. So thank you for coming. We're excited to have everyone here from CIAS. Cultural Integration Fellowship, you probably know, is the parent and founding organization of your graduate school. And we're always so excited when students come because you're doing, you're doing and being and activating the integral view, integral philosophy. So thank you for the work you're doing. I'm really proud of all of you and really touched uh, to have you here. Dr. Chaudhary there, you've seen his photo and that bust in uh, the fourth floor lobby. Have, have you, anybody seen it? When it was first made, the family, meaning the three children of the Chaudhary's, didn't recognize that that was their dad. It's like, <laughs> that <it> wasn't quite, <laughs> didn't quite capture his spirit. Dr. Chaudhary was a very dynamic, charismatic fellow. I didn't meet him personally, but we do have some taped lectures on CD now. If you ever want to hear his voice, he's really dynamic and um, a great orator. So you've inherited a wonderful heritage. So I encourage you to come some Sunday, every Sunday mostly, at 11. We have talks from various uh, backgrounds, various religious faiths, various philosophies. We won't try to convert you to anything because everyone should be following their own path. We firmly believe that. So do come and join us for an hour. We treat you to lunch as well. And right now, Jim Ryan from the Asian and Comparative Studies program is giving a mini course um, Sunday afternoon from 1.30 to 3. And it's free. We just have a donation basket, which we appreciate your donations. We're run entirely on donations. But luckily, we own this building, so that helps us a lot. So just if I work here, by the way, I'm the administrative assistant. I worked very closely with Bina Chaudhary for nine years before she passed away. We were good friends, and now I work for her daughter. Her eldest daughter is our president. Her name is Rita. You'll see her at the Founders Day Symposium next Friday if you come, and I encourage you to come if you have that day free. Baman Shirazi, who's the archivist, and used to have my job years ago, um, and he does a lot of graduate studies and coaching and working on people's dissertations. He's organized the whole thing. If you haven't been there before, it's a wonderful day, all free. The talks are fabulous. Um, I would recommend especially the one at 8 o'clock in the evening, I think. Um, so do, do uh, go if you can. So just a few uh, housekeeping things. There are three bathrooms in the building that are open to the public. There are four residents who live upstairs. You might see some people coming and going. Um, of course, most of you have seen the bathroom right here. I have an office back in the corner across from the kitchen. There's a bathroom in the office if you need to use it. I'm going to be here until about 2. And then there's one downstairs at the bottom of the stairs. And you've probably seen there's an assembly room down there for presentations today also. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I know you will, sharing each other's studies and research. And also parking, you're probably aware it's to our parking in this area. Fulton on that side has no restrictions. But two hours means within that block. So you can't just move across the street or down another spot. You have to go to another block which I'm sorry is a pain in the butt. I'm gonna move my little red cars out front and I'll move mine if somebody needs to put their car there. You're welcome to. So uh, have a great day. Thank you for being here. I love all of you. And if you need anything, let me know. And here's Craig. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for the fellowship for all the hosting us here over here. So welcome to our, uh, once again, to our EWP symposium. Every time we come here for this, I'm reminded of how, you know, for us it's an annual event, but actually we're stepping into a tradition that's far older than us, than this place, than this city. The symposium is an ancient combination educational experience, art form, ritual, at which teachers and students get together so that, uh, to celebrate the accomplishments of the students. And probably it's archetypal, ultimately. Uh, as long as there have been teachers and students, there have been some form of a symposium happening. So when you're here today, whether it's somebody who's presenting or somebody who's in the audience, you are stepping into an archetypal tradition. So um, think about that as you go. And um, to our presenters, I wanted to say to those who are about to present, we salute you. 
And, um, <laughs> I, I wanted to give you, um, not that you'll need it, but I wanted to give you a couple of tips off the top of my head. Uh, for some people, presenting um, in any sort of a public forum can be a little bit of a nervous experience. I've, I've had that happen myself. And so um, I wanted to give a couple of pointers. Um, the first one actually is to not forget to breathe. And um, we should do this together, actually. Um, sometimes, um, in the past when I've done presentations, um, I've invited the audience to breathe with me at the beginning of it, just to get everybody settled. So, by way of doing this right now, I'll, I'll kind of stay and, and try this out and see if it works soon. So I'm wondering if all of us could just breathe for a minute, along um, in harmony. So take a, take a deep inward breath. And exhale. And another inward breath. And exhale again. Third time. And up. Fourth time. Inspiration. And as you exhale this time, say OM. As a side note, I was um, looking at the news yesterday and there was a science story that just came out. And I don't know if you're aware that the Earth itself continually hums. It's a low tone that you can't hear with your ears. But the science story was mentioning that um, the reason the Earth makes this sound is because we now know, as of like two days ago, I guess, that the deep ocean waves, when they move across the Earth, strum the earth or ring the earth like a bell and that's where the sound comes from and um, this my brain works the way that it does i read that and i thought wow earth earth itself is humming the holy home continually every second every minute day and night it's fantastic so my first tip is to breathe <laughs> And deeply, it oxygenates your bloodstream too, and it really brings things down a bit. Um, my second tip uh, is to pace yourself. There's, there's a habit when we present sometimes, especially if we're a little anxious, to want to speed up. Uh, what happens, of course, uh, is when you speed up, you start losing the audience because they can't quite follow your pace. And then, if you look out over the audience and you see people's eyes rolling. Up in the, not, not from derision, but, but dizziness, right? <laughs> uh, so it makes it worse. It tends to be a feedback. So when, you, so when you go, just pace yourself. Take your time with your presentation. And uh, the pause is your friend. So every now and then when you make a key point, pause. And let people take it in fully. So that's my second tip. Uh, my third and last tip has to do with uh, reactions in the audience itself. So a couple of things about that. During these events, both students and faculty will go to different presentations while they are, they are in action. So you will have the experience not only of being a presenter, but of seeing people get up while you're presenting and walk out and go to another presentation. Do not be traumatized. <laughs> it happens as an integral part of what we're doing here. So don't worry about it. And uh, incidentally, even when that happens at some other in some other venues, <coughs> there could be many reasons. There you go. Had to use it there. There could be many reasons people do that. Um, it could be that the person who gets up has just had three cups of coffee, and they really need to see the inside of a restroom. You want them to bless them on their way. Please go. It's a benefit to all of us. Um, another thing too, uh, one other point, and then I'll um, stop talking and uh, ask Sophia to come up. The, um, over the years I've noticed, I'm not sure how to encapsulate this, so I'll just say it right out. Um, I've noticed that the expression of what I interpret, or used to interpret actually, as the, the disinterested or hostile or negative, otherwise negative expression of somebody in the crowd, has nothing to do with how they're reacting to my presentation. 
And I'll give you an example of this. So I just, I've stopped worrying about it. Um, if I see somebody like that in a, in a group, I'll just look at somebody who's going, yeah, you know. But um, there was a presentation I gave in Prescott on Earthrise as a mythic image of our time. And there was this guy, there was a couple hundred people there, and there was a guy in the front row, about 60-something years old, real grizzled and tough looking, and, and he was like gritting his teeth all the way through, and I thought, oh, this guy's hating what I'm saying, you know. I uh, must not like the space program, or must not like this, or must like, but I was trying not to minimize that chatter and just focus on what I was giving everybody and um, why I was there to begin with. But he was just gritting his teeth all the way through, and I thought, oh, he, you know. So I got done, and he comes walking up with the other people who wanted to talk to me after the presentation, and I thought, all right, now he's going to throw tomatoes and <laughs> hope they're heirlooms. So um, <laughs> he comes up and he says, um, you know, I've been to a lot of ecologically oriented presentations, and I've never heard anyone speak well of the space program. But as a matter of fact, he said, I am a colonel in the U.S. Air Force. I built the engines of Apollo 8 mm -hmm. that took that spacecraft to the moon so that th those pictures could be taken. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we didn't expect them to be taken. We had a totally different agenda. But as a result of them coming back to Earth, I was completely overwhelmed and removed from the agenda that I did have in building those engines. And I wanted to thank you for presenting that. And he shook my hand. So I don't know what he was doing with this. Maybe he could have been in physical pain, or um, there were people who were, I was showing images of the earth, and there were people who were actually weeping in the audience. So he was maybe being tough and like trying not to cry. You know? but I don't know what his deal was, but you can never tell. So don't be discouraged. That, the person who looks like they're asleep, they're, they're sitting there like this, or, or they're hurting their teeth or whatever, they may either be the one who come up to you or email you later and say, that was absolutely life-changing for me. So bear that in mind. And, um, my last tip um, is enjoy the day. You know, actually take moments through the day and say, I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm inside of an archetype, uh, and, and pause. You know, not only during your presentations, but pause throughout the day and enjoy being here. So with that, I would invite Sophia to come up. <laughs> Thank you, Craig, and thank, thank you for the reminder that I went by Sophia for like a year in this program. <laughs> but my name is Sylvia Zofia Hantovich, um, and I'm going to be one of the MCs today. Um, and I'm really excited to be here. I, um, I've been to the symposium a couple times, and I presented, I think, two years ago about the Black Madonna. Um, and I'm just I'm thrilled because the schedule, you know, the, the program is just amazing, and so many of my dear friends are presenting today. Um, and the first person that's presenting is Angela Anderson, and we started the program together, both PhD uh, candidates here at AWP. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so excited to hear your presentation. I've been kind of part, friends with Angela um, through her journey and watching her research develop and her thinking develop, and she's really um, been looking a lot at the intersection between spirituality and um, indigenous knowledge and uh, creativity. And she does an amazing job of holding sacred space that I've had a chance to be a part of and I'm just really, really happy to introduce her. So here's Angela Anderson and the name of her presentation is Activating, I know how to do, Activating Relational Reciprocity as the Guide for the Indigenous Knowledge Scholar. 